really exciting to see the momentum behind Android Wear. But for me, what's fascinating is that when you take a traditional device like a watch and you add computing and connectivity and a layer of intelligence to it, you end up transforming that experience. Wouldn't it be great if we could do that for more devices? If we could connect more devices, the devices that you run into in your day-to-day -day life, things like parking meters, washing machines, airport kiosks, if we could get physical devices and connect them in a smart way to the internet, we think we can transform the experience for users. We call this the Internet of Things. And there are a whole range of possibilities you can imagine. The most common thing that gets talked about is the smarter home. Imagine you're driving in, your garage door, your lighting, your blinds, your music, all working together to create a better home maybe save energy in the process. But the possibilities go well beyond that. You can imagine a farmer managing the entire farm from her smartphone. The security cameras, the sensors, the irrigation equipment, all of them can be connected so that it works better together. A city's public transportation system, buses, bus schedules, parking spots, you could manage traffic, maintenance, and create a much better experience for people living in the city. So we see a range of possibilities, and we think it's endless. But there are a whole lot of challenges. Today, people are making connected devices, like smart light bulbs. But it's really hard for device manufacturers, just like in early days of smartphones. You don't know exactly how to build your software stack. Developers don't know how to target these experiences. And finally, for users, it is really confusing to make all of this work together. We are fortunate to have Nest. Nest has been working hard at taking traditional devices in the home and reimagining them for users. They've already done that with the thermostat and the smoke detector, and they've been very, very successful. So we have worked, collaborated closely. We have pulled in people from the Nest, the Android, and the Chrome OS teams to take a fundamentally new approach to the Internet of Things. And we want to provide an end-to-end -end complete solution for our ecosystem. And to do that, we needed to think through all the building blocks. You need the underlying operating system. You need a communications layer so that the devices can talk to each other seamlessly. And finally, for, use, for users, it has to be a simple and elegant experience. So I'm very excited to announce today we are announcing Project Brillo, which is the underlying operating system for the Internet of Things. Brillo is derived from Android, but we have taken Android and polished it down, hence the name Brillo. We have, this is basically the lower layers of Android, the kernel, the hardware abstraction layer, the real core essentials, so that it can run on devices with a minimal footprint, things like door locks. Because it's derived from Android, you get full operating system support, things like connectivity. You have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth low energy built in, and working with Nest, we are adding support for alternative connectivity like, like Thread so that there are low power wireless solutions as well. We have thought about security from the ground up. And given it's based on Android, you get immediate scale. Many, many device manufacturers can use it. In addition, we provide device manufacturers can manage it from a centralized management console. They can provision these devices. They can update them and so on. So it's, it's an end-to-end -end functioning operating system. The next step is what we call as Weave. Weave is the communications layer by which the Internet of Things can actually talk to each other. You need a common language, a shared understanding, so that devices can not only talk to each other and to the cloud and to your phone. So what we are doing is we have standardized schemas Schemas are nothing but a semantic blueprint uh, for all these devices to have a common language. For example, a camera can define what does it mean to say, take a picture, and all devices around it can understand that. A door lock can define lock and unlock as two phrases which all other devices in that ecosystem can understand and work off each other. So we will have standardized schemas, 
Developers can submit custom schemas, and we will have a Weave certification program to make sure anything that is Weave certified can work together. Weave is available cross-platform, so you can use this as a modular approach. You can have Brillo and Weave together, or you can run Weave on top of your existing stack. And very, the powerful thing is Weave exposes developer APIs in a cross-platform way. So if you're writing a recipe application on your smartphone, the actual application can now turn on your smart oven, set it to the right temperature, right? And any connected device, your oven can be voice-enabled easily because we provide voice APIs as part of this. The final thing we are doing is getting the user, user interface right. So because this is built into Android, any Android device will recognize another device based on Brillo or Weave, and as a user, you get the same standardized setup for any connected device. You open up your phone, we detect it, you choose the device and set up the right owners, and you're good to go. So, this is the beginning of, beginning of a journey. Just like we have done Android for smartphones, we are doing this for the entire ecosystem together. Brillo goes into developer preview in Q3 of this year, and we, we are going to announce documentation throughout the year, and we are working with developers, and the full stack will be ready to go by Q4 of 2015. And so we are very excited that for the first time, we are bringing a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution, and we hope we can connect devices in a seamless and intuitive way and make them work better for users.